Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to summer session 2020. Uh, we want to start with chapter 2 water, the solvent for biochemical reactions. As you know, water is the main component of most cells. Uh, its geometry and its properties as a solvent play major roles in determining the properties of living systems. This is the outline before. We will talk about water and polarity. Session 1, 2 hydrogen bonds, 3 acid bases and pH. Then 4 titration curves and finally buffers. We want to introduce something called electronegativity. It is the ability of an atom to attract electrons to its cell and it's a measure of uh, the force of an atom's attraction for electrons it shares in a chemical bond with another atom. This sharing could be equal or this sharing could be unequal. Oxygen and nitrogen are more electronegative than carbon and hydrogen. So we have here an equal sharing of electrons uh, in the bond. If you look at the table here, you see oxygen tops the list in electronegativity value and hydrogen has the lowest value as you can see. Now, what is polarity? As I said, when two atoms of the same electronegativity form a bond, the electrons are shared equally between the atoms, then the difference in electronegativity is zero and the bond will be a non-polar. Whereas when the two atoms are different, then the, the pair of electrons forming the bond are joined unequally, and so there is a difference in electronegativity, and the bond will be a polar bond. For example, the bond between oxygen and nitrogen is polar, whereas, for example, between carbon and hydrogen, which have a, a similar electronegativity, and the difference is uh, is low, then the bond is non-polar. Also, in H2, for example, molecule, this bond is also non-polar. Sometimes, you could have a non-polar molecule, although it has polar covalent bonds. For example, if we take this molecule CO2, we see that oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so it attracts the pair of electrons more toward it. It gains a partial negative and carbon partial positive, and from the other side the same. Now, here we have the, uh, the direction of polarity of the bond is from positive to negative from this side and from positive to negative this side and they are equal then they cancel out. So we can say that CO2 molecule itself is non-polar. Why? Because of its geometry linear. Although it has polar covalent bonds such as CO. Whereas if we look at a molecule like water which also consists of three atoms we, uh, it has two polar covalent bonds, two OHs, like this. But because there is a, an angle here of 104.3 degree, then there is no cancellation of the polarity of the bond. And so we can say, for example, that water actually has dipole. And there is always an even distribution of charge, which gives rise to the large dipole moment of water. And you can see the direction of the dipole moment as organic chemists like. Whereas physicists will have the one in the opposite direction. The direction of the arrow will be on the opposite direction. Now what about solvent properties of water. Why do some chemicals dissolve in water while others do not? Let's talk about different types of bonds. Ionic bonds were held together by positive and negative ends. 
the strong response fault with this interaction that depends on the attraction that occurs when oppositely charged molecules are in close proximity. Ion dipole interactions occur when ions in solution interact with molecules that have dipoles, for example, an ACL dissolved in water. Now, this is the picture when, for example, a salt like KCL is dissolved in, in water. And ionic solids, although we have cations and anions, are joined together by this ionic bond, and in solution, they are ionized. So that each ion, for example, if we take Cl minus, the anion uh, is surrounded by water molecules from the opposite charge. Cl minus, then the two hydrogens of water surrounds uh, Cl minus. Uh, whereas if we look at sodium, the cation, it is surrounded by oxygen atoms with their partially negative charge. So the positively charged sodium ions are attracted to the partial negative charges on the water, uh, and water surrounding ions of this type are called hydration shells. So each ion is surrounded by a hydration shell of water, which prevents them from getting together and forming the salt and precipitate again. So they remain uh, in, in solution. Whereas, for example, evaporate water, then as the quantity of water decreases, then the cation and the anion will come close to each other, forming an ACL solid, and this will precipitate out of solution. Now we have uh, two types of interactions. The one for, uh, in KCL, for example, as I said, K plus or Cl minus, each of them is called ion, and they are surrounded by hydration water. So the type of interaction is called ion dipole. In the case of potassium and ion dipole in the case of Cl uh, minus. However, water can interact with other liquids such as, for example, alcohol or ketone, like acetone. This type of interaction, however, is, as you see, dipole-dipole interaction because both of them, water and the alcohol, water and the ketone, both of them are examples of dipoles. On the other hand, hydrocarbons are nonpolar. The favorable ion dipole and dipole dipole interaction responsible for the solubility of ionic and polar compounds do not occur for nonpolar compounds, as these compounds uh, tend not to dissolve in water. Because there is a rule in chemistry says, like dissolve like, so polar dissolve in polar, and nonpolar dissolve in nonpolar. Continuing with solvent properties of water, we have other types of forces called van der Waals forces. They are non-covalent association based on weak attractions of transient dipoles for one another. Uh, called van der Waals interaction or bonds include non-covalent bonds that do not involve electrostatic interactions of fully charged ions. Dipole-dipole interaction forces that occur between molecules that are dipoles refer to the partial positive side of a molecule attracts the partial negative side of another molecule. Another type called dipole-induced dipole interactions where permanent dipole in one molecule can induce a transient dipole in another molecule through momentary distortion of electron bonds. Weak and generally do not lead to solubility in water. The last type called induced dipole-induced dipole interaction or 
it has another name, London dispersion force, attraction between transient induced dipole. And here, uh, in this figure, we see the first type called dipole induced dipole bonds here. Polar water is able to distort the electron cloud of the distort the electron cloud of nonpolar molecule like oxygen, creating a momentary dipole. Once the dipole is created, water is attracted to it. So this is called dipole induced dipole. The other one is called induced dipole induced dipole. In this case, also called London dispersion force. Uh, these attractions, these attraction arise when otherwise nonpolar molecules pump into each other. Here we have two nonpolar molecules; they pump to each other, and they distort each other's electron shells, forming forming induced dipole. Once the dipoles are formed, the molecules are momentarily attracted to e to each uh, other. Now, then we move ahead to uh, to ask ourselves a question: Is this strength of bonds formed in biochemistry? We have the strongest one is called covalent bond. For example, you see uh, the strength of a bond is measured by its bond energy, the energy required to break it. And you see here, and you see here, both CH and OH covalent bonds. They have they have they require the highest energy to break them. So, for example, OH, the highest, then CH, whereas the other non-covalent forces, name, namely ionic interactions, ion dipole, hydrogen bonds, which we will talk about in a little while, and van der Waals interactions. So this shows you the strengths of bonds formed in biochemistry. Now, continuing solvent properties of water, we have two types of substances, hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Uh, hydrophilic tendency to dissolve in water, water-loving, like ionic and polar substances. Hydrophobic tending not to dissolve in water, or water-hating. Uh, hydrophobic interactions, attraction between nonpolar molecules. We also have a third type called amphipathic molecule that contains both hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions, example, sodium palmitate. So if we look at this table, we see two columns, one for hydrophilic substances and one for hydrophobic. Uh, uh, no, all of them, no examples on hydrophilic substances, but then on all polar covalent compounds like alcohols and ketones, uh, sugars, ionic compounds like all salts, amino acids and phosphate esters, all these are hydrophilic, water-loving, whereas non-polar covalent compounds like hydrocarbons such as hexane, benzene, etc., uh, fatty acids, cholesterol, all these, they hate water, so they are referred to as being hydrophobic substances. Now, uh, to ask us uh, the following question, why do oil and water mix together separate into layers? Now, a single molecule may have uh, both polar, like this sodium palmitate, have a polar and non-polar portion. And it is referred to as being H amphipathic. Now, a long chain fatty acid, you see here, having a polar carboxylic acid and a long non-polar. Now, the carboxylic acid group, the head group, contains two oxygen atoms in addition to carbon and hydrogen, as you can see. It is very polar and can form a carboxylate anion at neutral pH. So when you dissolve this in water, sodium ion separates and this remains of the molecule. The tail contains only carbon and hydrogen and is thus nonpolar. So a compound such as this in the presence of water tends to form a structure called micelles in which the polar head groups, and this is, this is the structure of micelle, in which the polar head groups are in contact with the aqueous environment here. All the polar head groups are in contact with aqueous environment because like dissolve like, 
and the non-polar tails are buried in the middle away from water. So again, this is spherical arrangement of organic molecules in water solution clustered so that their hydrophobic parts are buried in, into the sphere and hydrophilic parts are uh, exposed to the water or aqueous environment and formation depends on the attraction between temporary induced dipoles. So this structure you see here, this structure you see here is called mycel. In summary for this section, the first one, water is a polar molecule. Forces of attraction exist between the unlike charges. Polar substances tend to dissolve in water and non-polar do not. And the properties of water have a direct effect on the behavior of biomolecules.